All right, next up, we will calculate those home ranges using RStudio. So let me share my screen and open up RStudio. So the first thing you will want to do is go to File, New File, R Script. So this will allow you to type in your code and then be able to save it in the future. And then you can open it up in the future or you can email it to someone else so you can share your R code like me if you need troubleshooting with anything. So let's go back to mine. So first you're going to install some packages. So you're going to have to install this add habitat, HR package, this SP package, and this scales package. So to do that, let me try to zoom in a little bit more. So in this top left hand box up here is where you're going to type in all your code. And as you're done, then you'll hit run. So first you'll type in install.packages and then you'll start your parentheses, start your quotation marks, ADE, Habitat, capital H, capital R. Then you'll close your quotation marks, close your parentheses. So this is how you install any kind of package if it's your first time using this package. And I have this uh, pound sign and I put some notes over here. Anything after a pound sign is your way of keeping notes to yourself and R will not run that code. So after you've typed that in, then you'll hit run and it's going to install it, but you still will need to open it up in your library. So once you've installed it, great, but then you have to access it every time you open up RStudio. So you only install it once, but you will run the library every time you open up R. So you'll type in library and then in parentheses, ADE Habitat, capital H, capital R, and then you'll close your parentheses and then hit run. So same thing for installed at packages and then in parentheses SP, that's gonna install a spatial package that we're gonna use today. You'll hit run, then you'll open it up in the library by typing in library and then in parentheses SP, hit run. Last package you'll install is scales. And then once you've installed it, then you type in library, in parentheses scales, you'll hit run. So now all these packages are available for you. So the first thing you wanna do is load in that CSV file. Now, um, RStudio requires a lot of computer coding. It's not as user-friendly as QGIS and ArcMap. So you're gonna to have to type in the pathway for our studio to be able to read your file. So you'll title it something like I titled it turtles. Then you'll see this less than sign dash. That coding right there, that less than sign and dash means you're telling R anything before that sign is the title that you wanna name this data set. And then after that sign, it's what you want it to do. So we want it to read in or load in our CSV file. So we type in read.csv, and now we tell it the whole pathway. So in parentheses, then we start our quotation. This is the pathway to my file. C semicolon slash users slash champ slash desktop. And if you don't know the pathway to get to your turtle location CSV file, you can open up that folder where you're storing it. Navigate to the actual CSV file. Right click and go to properties. Now these instructions are if you're using a Windows operating system, it would be different on a Mac. But at least you're learning the skills involved. So here is the path this shows me the location where I'm storing my turtles underscore locations CSV file. So this is the pathway. Now I can't just copy and paste it into R because R reads it in um, 
with the line slanted the other way. But I could copy and paste it and then I go and change it later. So for example, if I copied and pasted it, these would be in this direction. So I had to change all those to this direction, but you get used to it. So we tell it where it's located, that pathway. We tell it the name of the file, .csv. We end our quotation, comma, header equals capital T. So header equals true. That means we're telling R that the first row of data is not actually data, it's column headings. So this line of code loads in my data. So I hit run. And down here at the bottom, I see this greater than sign and just this blinking line. So that, that tells me hopefully it did work. I don't see any big red errors. Hopefully it worked. So now I'm going to look at the structure of that data set I just called turtles. I'm going to look at the structure of it. So I type in str and then in parentheses, whatever I called it up here. And I hit run. So it's telling me that there's 70 observations or 70 unique rows and there's six variables. So, or six columns. So the first one is called ID. The next one's called date, time, X, Y, and zone. And of the ID, we have five levels, five unique values, which is correct for our ID numbers of our turtles. We had five unique ID numbers. And then for date, there were 87 different dates that we triangulated and found the location of the turtles. And there were 128 different times. Um, there were 347,725 different um, X coordinate and a whole lot of Y coordinates. And for zone, so we had 18 of a zone. The other thing we're interested in seeing with this structure is is that column considered a factor or an integer? So a factor meaning a categorical variable or was it a quantitative variable? So ID number is a factor. In this case, we're calling it a category. So you are either turtle one, two, three, four, or five. So an integer or quantitative variable would mean something you measure. So we're measuring, um, we're taking a measurement of the, the latitude or the longitude, how far away we were from something. Whereas ID number in this case, even though it's a number, it's really a category. Which turtle were you? Were you turtle A or turtle B or turtle C? Or turtle, you, know, you could call it either a name or a number, but this is loaded incorrectly. We wanted our ID, our turtle ID, we wanted it to be a factor or category. And we wanted our X and Y locations to be integers, to be numbers. So that was loaded correctly. The next thing we want to do is tell our, our X field and Y field for our latitude longitude. So we're going to tell it, we're going to call it X. That's, we're going to call this date, this new data frame. And then that less than sign dash turtles, so back to the name we originally called this data set. Then we're going to tell it the X field is that column called X. We may have called our column something different, but we're still telling it the, the column of coordinates of the X coordinates. Now we're going to hit run. Now we want to tell it the column that's holding the Y coordinates. So we're going to call it Y less than sign dash turtles, and then the rest of this coding, we're going to hit run. Now we want to plot those locations, plot the X and the Y. And here we go. So we can see these are all the locations, just like we saw in QJS and in ArcMap. We saw the XY locations. But remember, these are all the locations of all the turtles. We want to make an MCP for each individual turtle. So we're not done yet. Now we want to create this um, spatial data frame that holds those locations, but holding them, separating them by the ID number of the different turtles. So now we're going to call this 
new data frame. We're going to call it turtles.sp, then lesson sign dash turtles, the original data frame, and then all this coding. So for the different columns, we're going to just save the ID column, the X column, and the Y column. We're going to hit run. Now we're going to create the coordinates. So we're going to say coordinates, and then in parentheses, whatever we called this data, this new data frame right up here. So turtles.sp. And we're saying we're just going to hold the columns of X and Y. Now, as we run that, we see there are some missing values. And that was a problem we had earlier with ArcMap. There were a couple different turtles where um, when someone was triangulating to find their location, they couldn't find the actual location. So they put in NA. So we need to remove those. We could either remove them by going back to the CSV file, cleaning up that file, or we could do it here in R. So let's do it here with R. So to do that, we're gonna tell R to remove anything that has an NA. And here's the coding for that. So turtles, um, we're gonna go back to the original turtles frame. And whenever it sees this um, NA, we're gonna have it removed. So this is all the coding for that. And then we'll hit run. Now we're gonna go through everything again that we did previously. And great, we don't get that error message anymore. So we have no more missing values. We just have a new subsetted data frame with just values. So now we wanna tell our studio that our data has been projected into UTMs and at the 18th zone based on a datum of WGS 84. So here, and that's based on the units are in meters. So here's all that coding for that. Then we hit run. So now we have this projected data frame and now we wanna create the MCP for the different turtles. And we could do an MCP, we could do a 50%, 95%, 100%. Let's start with 100% because then we can compare apples to apples. So this is what we did in a QJS and an ArcGIS. They were just doing the 100% MCP. So we can do that here too, by setting it percent equal to 100. So turtles.mcp is what we're gonna call it. Then less than sign dash MCP. So that's a code that's a line of code that uh, we can use because we had downloaded or we had installed um, a different library. We, we installed a different program into our library. So that's why we can use this MCP. Otherwise we'd have an error message if we hadn't installed those already. So we're gonna install, uh, or sorry, we're gonna run the MCP on that turtles.sp. So this data frame that we had cleaned up, we removed the NAs then we're gonna set the percent to 100. Hit run. And now let's see the results. So let's hit turtles MCP. So before we were just storing the data, now let's have it show us the data. So let's hit run. And so this is telling us for turtle one, here is the area 7.9 for turtle two, 21.5. Now the default in R um, for UTMs is uh, hectares, not square meters, it's in hectares. So just think when you're looking at this, so this is 7.9 hectares and 21.5 hectares. So a hectare is 0.01 square miles. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have the measurement for the area. So the MCP for all of our different turtles, but let's say we wanna make a nice map so we can plot this new map of the turtles.sp and we can change the colors based on the ID. So each individual turtle ID. So here's just some simple coding we can run. And that puts the individual locations for each unique turtle. Now let's put, um, let's add in some more coding using the MCP that was calculated. So now we're making a different color MCP around all of those locations. So that was using 
a hundred percent MCP. What if we don't know what percent we want? Maybe we don't know if we want a 50 or a hundred. So here's some line of coding we can use to help us visually see the differences as we increase the percentage of our MCP. So I called it turtle HR, so turtle home range, uh, less than sign dash mcp.area. And this is something we can run. This is line of code we could run because of a previous package we installed. And then turtles.sp, so our previous data frame we made. Then percent equals seek. So sequence, we're going to do a sequence between 50 and 100% MCP, and it's going to increase by five. Then we'll hit run. Ah, I've made my, sorry about that. I made this too large to run. So let me try again. All right, now I'll zoom in. Okay, so for turtle one at the top, so we have turtle one, two, three, four, and five. And our X axis is the home range level. So it's ranging from 50 to 100 and it's going up. Right now, we, we pretty much just see it going up by tens. Um, but if we zoomed in even more, we'd see points for moving up every 5% of MCP. So now we can start to see the home range size on the left. So this is giving us an idea of where we see big changes in our home range size. So for turtle one, we see it staying um, around the same home range size up until really like that 80, around the 80 home range size. Then for turtle two, so the top right hand turtle, so now it seems like it's staying in the same home range size up until the 90th MCP. Then we see a big increase. For turtle three, we see more of a change at 80. For turtle four, we see a big change starting at 90. And then turtle five, we see changes a little bit earlier than, than 80. So this might help you decide if you want to analyze um, and visually look at a home range size of maybe 80 instead of doing 100. You might be more interested in um, where they're spending most of their time in the, in the 80th MCP. So I will share this code with you so you can play around with it on your own computers. But now you can see that with R, you can start making more manipulations than you can with QGIS or ArcGIS. But with those other packages, they're really easy to use. And that's a big benefit. So I hope you found this interesting.